acupuncturist, birth doula, and childbirth educator. When I was in college for my bachelor's, I worked for an acupuncturist for the first time. And it was really cool to see how she helped people for a living. And um, when I grew up, the doctor kind of was awful and he was fat and he smelled like smoke. And every time I saw him, I had to wait three hours, no matter if I had an appointment or not. And he would just write a prescription within two minutes and then leave. So the whole idea of acupuncture and Chinese medicine was really foreign to me in my early 20s. And so th this woman, this acupuncturist, is really what inspired me to do that. <laughs> For an initial visit, somebody would come in, we would sit down in these chairs, we would have a consultation. Uh, they'd have uh, paperwork completed that I ask all about their health history. So we sit down and we talk about their health and it's not just their back pain or their pregnancy. I am really interested in the whole health, the whole person. Um, so we spend about 20-30 minutes talking about that and then we do diagnostics. So in Chinese medicine the way we diagnose is one is we look at your tongue. So the tongue is the only muscle that you can see outside the body. So it gives us a good understanding of your internal state of health. And then the other way is we feel with three fingers on both sides, and it's more just than the rate. Uh, the, it's the depth, um, certain positions, superficial, deep, and there's 28 pulse qualities, and that means different things, and it correlates to different organs or channels, pathway where energy flows in your body. So those are the way we diagnose. And then I'll do a treatment where we have them on a massage table. I make sure they're comfortable, they're warm, uh, and they'll insert the acupuncture needles. It's a one-time use. We put them in the sharps container. Uh, I feel like that acupuncture should not be painful. I always say if it hurts, tell me. I'll take it out, change it, move it. I don't want you sitting here in pain. So they'll spend some time resting with the needles in. Most people fall asleep. I'll play guided meditation, soft music, and they just relax. herb that I burn. This is uh, called moxibustion. This is a form I'm using as a stick and it is smokeless and so we light this and this herb uh, helps with strengthening the body, boosting the immune system, warming. This is really good for menstrual cramps. So I'm just going to warm her body up some of the points to try to help her feel better. My mentor, Bertram Furman, he's an acupuncturist, 22 years. So I think this is about 15 years ago, I interned with him um, in another office in Hillcrest. And then when he moved to this clinic, myself and Jared Anderson, one of my colleagues, uh, we shared one of the rooms as massage therapist for about five years while we were going to school for our master's in acupuncture. So this feels like coming home. So we specialize with fertility, pregnancy, postpartum. So 90% uh, of our patients, I would say, it always fluctuates, but most of the time they're mostly pregnant, but there's a lot of fertility. And um, we treat men and women and children but that just seems to be what we gravitate towards helping the mamas. So what got me into it is really my own situation and my help that I've had from Chinese medicine within my own you know, OBGYN stuff. So 17 years ago I had a stillborn baby. I lost my first baby at term and she died from a cord accident. So I gave birth to a dead baby, which was the worst thing that ever happened to me. And it really um, made me into who I am today because of that child. Um, and, you know, I just feel so passionate about helping people who are, you know, trying to get pregnant, who are pregnant, or just had a baby feel like they have options, 
you know, options in natural care and to empower them, to educate them, and to have have good experiences. It's a very memorable thing. People will never forget the birth of their children and you know, I want to humanize the experience and, and help make it as positive as possible. And you know, sadly from that has, uh, from the worst thing has come the best thing. So that's kind of how I look at it, that I'm thankful for this child who came into my life many years ago. Um, and unfortunately I, I have had to help a lot of women over the years now go through loss and it's just something that I can, oh, it's a place I can go to and talk about and help people get through because it uh, sucks and it's part of life, unfortunately. And there's no guarantees whether you're, you know, four weeks or 40 weeks. There's no guarantees in life. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of what really was a, what, pushed me over the edge that made me change careers and I really want to do this and make a difference. A doula is not touching or delivering or it's not a medical person. It's more of a mental emotional support for the, not just the laboring mom, but her partner and or family member in the room. For pregnancy, I do so many different things from Everything from fertility to helping them trying to get pregnant, um, in the beginning nausea, vomiting, sometimes it's threatened miscarriages, uh, a lot of fatigue, back pain, pelvic pain, high risk, low risk, um, and everywhere from like, I just peed on a stick and I just found out I'm pregnant to 41 and a half weeks and get this baby out. <laughs> I hear that a lot. One woman was 15 weeks pregnant and her bag broke. Her bag of water is where the baby is lives and her doctor told her to abort the baby and she was very religious and she was like, oh no way, I'm not, no way. And so she called me and I went over, treat her at home with acupuncture and moxibustion and then her bag resealed per her perinatologist after breaking at 15 weeks gestation, which is just uh, amazing and she carried her baby almost to term, delivered 34 weeks, and her baby is two and a half now. She has another kid. So many times I have helped women who have had bleeding early in pregnancy, and it has helped. So I think that's one of the biggest things that people don't know about, how acupuncture can help. I get a lot of people that are, they come to me like hopeless, whether it's the fertility doctors that just say, oh, you're too old, or you're just never going to have a baby and get over it, to, um, I had a woman come to me 20 weeks pregnant where the doctor said, oh, your baby's going to die in utero possibly, or while you're giving birth or shortly thereafter, and just scared this poor woman to death. And I wound up seeing her every week the rest of her pregnancy, and she carried to term, and she had a healthy, normal baby. So I feel like one of the things that I do is I humanize the whole experience, and I help them whether it's, you know, mentally or physically, um, emotionally, giving birth, becoming a mother, becoming a parent is a huge deal. So it's always an honor to support during such a time and, and really to help them when they have no hope. So I teach continuing education for licensed acupuncturists and doctors. Uh, so I'm speaking at a conference this weekend. It's called the Acupuncture Growth Symposium here in San Diego. And my topic is about utilizing technology uh, with pregnancy patients. So um, totally my thing. It's a three-day conference and I'm speaking for two hours one day. So that's really exciting. <laughs> and um, I'm working on, on online classes. So I'm creating an online course for expecting couples to have a, a, a birth education class. So I love teaching birth education, and like I said, I'm a total birth geek. So <laughs> I, I, it's like nothing I'd rather talk about more. And so where most people don't want to hear about those things, I love teaching about birth education. 
This is a skull of a 40 week fetus that I bought at a medical conference. And then this is um, the pelvis example uh, skeleton here. And so I was so excited when I bought the, the head to see if it would fit through. I have so many women who are freaked out about the size of their baby. So it's amazing. This had not, you know, this did not come together, but usually the babies are gonna go in, turn, and come out like that. Yeah, it fits, it totally fits. So don't be afraid of how big your baby is. I always tell women, you know, it's uh, women who've been birthing their babies for thousands of years and you can do it, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna show you why it's not the greatest for women to birth their babies on their backs. So in the hospitals, oftentimes women have epidurals and so that's their only choice is to birth their babies on their back. But you have to realize, so, so this is a pelvis. So now if you're on your back and this is the sacrum and the coccyx bone, can you see that? Mm -hmm. So you see how it goes up? So when the baby's coming out, it not only it goes down and it has to go up, so you're going up against gravity when, when the baby, when the woman's on her back. So it's better to give birth in an upright position where you can use the force of gravity. A better position would be um, squatting position. Some of the hospitals have squatting bars and um, where the beds the feet part detaches and then they have a bar that goes out and forward and so they can rest in between contractions but then when they're ready to push they'll just lean forward and hold on to the bars but then oftentimes like if at home or unmedicated birth a mom might put like one leg up and that way she's working you know opening her pelvis in different areas but using the force of gravity to birth her baby instead of trying to work up against gravity where you're pushing up and out, like if you were under 